Hello, lip gloss and aftershave fans. This is Jenny here today. As you can see, I've got a very special guest. Um, we are here today to talk about exfoliation, which is our major focus for this month and the season. The summer is over and we are ready to get in there. So I have with me today Mark Lees, and you may or may not know him, so I will let him introduce himself. Mark, tell us about yourself. Well, thank you, Jenny. It's great to be here today. Um, I, um, my name is Mark Lees. Um, I have been in the industry for a very long time. I'm probably best known for my books and the main one being Skincare Beyond the Basics, which has now been out since 1994. And we're in our fourth edition with that. Um, <clears throat> I have my own product company, which I've had since 1988. And we manufacture products for um, acne prone skin, which is kind of what put us on the map and I guess we're probably best, best known for, but we also um, manufacture very focused products for aging skin as well as sensitive skin. So anything from clogged combination skin to acne to sensitive to aging, uh, we address it in a very specific way. You cover it all. And Mark, off the, off the just a side note here, there's a huge, and I don't want to use the word trend, but it seems like aging and acne seems to be like a very common issue that people are talking about these days. So what, what are your thoughts on that and treating that? Because it, when you treat aging skin, you typically come at it from one side. And when you treat acneic skin, it's a whole different ballgame. What are your thoughts on that? You're, you're talking about when someone has aging, ac acne prone aging skin. Yeah, so let's yeah. just talk about maybe 45 and up. You're really kind of in the aging process. You know, I've got girlfriends that are mid-30s and 40s, and they're still breaking out. So this adult right. acne. Right. Well, the, 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 the best way to tackle this, and this is one of our big concentrations, is uh, the problem when you treat aging and you have acne-prone skin is a lot of products that are made for um, aging are made... Uh, to be more rich because we're sort of assuming that the aging skin is going to be drier. Uh, but if you've got an aging oily skin or an aging acne prone skin, you don't need the emollients and the oils and the fats that they put in a lot of these creams. And people go to treat themselves with uh, a heavier cream thinking they're, you know, they're aging, so they need something heavier. But in the meantime, they are basically polluting their skin with oils that are really just not intended for their skin type. So they have that predisposition to acne. So the way you get around this, and this is a big role that I play in, certain, in terms of product development, um, is putting things in bases that do not clog the skin up. Right. So the vehicle is what the problem is. The vehicle to the product is what the problem is. The problem is never the active or the performance ingredient. It's never the peptide or the alpha hydroxy or the ceramide. It's what it's floating at. And so if they're, if they're using something that is very oily or has a lot of fat, which was, would be fine if you have allopitic skin, you know, but uh, these people, if you're acne prone, you don't have allopitic skin. So. Exactly. So the best part about this discussion, everybody, you can, Mark, you're actually hosting uh, various seminars across the nation that focus specifically and get much more in depth um, beyond what we'll discuss today and talk about acne and aging. Tell us about the classes that you have coming up. We have um, uh, our, our 2019 seminar uh, tour is called From Acne to Aging. And we cover both acne and aging in detail in these day-long classes. And we have two more left for the year. Uh, we're going to be in Boston at the Katherine Hines Institute on October 6th. And then we are in Houston at the Institute of uh, Cosmetology there, the Sedesco School for Houston. And we are there, uh, I believe it's November 3rd. Uh, and I know we're going to put our link up a little later on, and our entire schedule is on there. I also want to mention that we have our three-day immersion, which we call. Uh, it's a three-day intensive class with uh, myself and Kyle Mull, who is our uh, education, national education director. Um, and that's here in Florida, in Pensacola. 
which is uh, the last part of um, January. Okay. And so we have three full days with us. It's that's why we call it an immersion. If you yeah. you'll either love us or hate us at the end of those three days. And I tell you what, anyone in the Northeast, that's the best place to be in January because you just need to escape. Um, yeah, right. up here. That's kind of why we planned it that way. We Perfect. made sure it wasn't Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> exactly. So people absolutely put links um, so everyone can go register. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with the presentation today. So we're going to talk about exfoliation. Um, I know you dive really, really um, deeply into AHAs and BHAs. And I just want to let everyone know that this presentation is sort of a glimpse into everything that Mark does. He does a lot of presentations at trade shows, IECSC, um, and places like that. So you can see him at these shows. Or if you're lip gloss and aftershave fans, you can watch webinars like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, Mark, and we can okay. get started. Let's do play from the start. And we are ready to go. Just let me know when um, I need to advance. Okay, well, we're, we're, we chose this. Uh, I know it's uh, exfoliation is the theme of the month uh, with, uh, with uh, Jenny and Barry this month. And it, this is really a good month to talk about exfoliation because we're probably trying to refresh from um, the sun and being out all summer and humid weather and things like that. Plus, if you we're gonna be talking a little bit about peeling procedures today or, or, or light exfoliation treatments today. Um, it's a good time of year to do it anyway because of the fact that um, you can, you're probably going to stay out of the sun. You're less likely to spend a lot of time outside and you don't want to be outside in the middle of a exfoliation series. That's really kind of a, a, something you want to avoid, um, especially, you know, long-term exposure outside. So, uh, that being said, we're going to talk about, we're basically focusing on alpha and beta hydroxy acids today. Uh, of course, there's all sorts of exfoliation treatments from microdermabrasion to enzymes to, uh, some of the stronger things like uh, Jesner's and TCA and what have you. But I'm going to talk today about uh, alpha and beta hydroxy acids because they are easy to work with. Um, they are very effective if they're done right. And um, they don't have a lot of downtime and a lot of trauma for your client in terms of having to take time off like you might if you had a treatment that caused frosting or something like that. So we're going to talk about these. These are the treatments we do the most at our own clinic uh, here in Florida. And uh, so we're going to talk about them. So let's go to the next slide. Um, uh, so we want to talk about what alpha hydroxy acids are. And people ask me questions about this and they don't really understand. Um, they'll say, well, is it a, is an AHA and, a, and glycolic acid the same thing? Well, glycolic acid is one of the alpha hydroxy acids, but basically the alpha hydroxy acids are a family of naturally occurring acids. Uh, they occur in nature. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's found in sugarcane. Uh, they're found in milk, apples, grapes, and they actually naturally occur, occur in the human body. You have like lactic acid is what causes you to be sore when you run, especially if you haven't run in a long time. Lactic acid gets in your muscles, and that's what causes you to be sore. And glycolic acid is actually part of the energy cycle that every cell goes through. So you have glycolic acid in every cell of your body at one point or another. So they're completely natural to the human body. Uh, most AHAs that are used in the skincare industry though, are byproducts of the chemical industry. So so people like you to think that they kind of, you know, they went out and squeezed some sugar cane to get the product. <laughs> and you can obtain it that way, but it's really, really expensive. And you have to go through a lot of filtration. Yeah, most AHAs are used are, are spinoff products of the chemical industry. And they are uh, multi, multi purified when uh, the laboratories get them to make AHA products. And I would say more in a more controlled environment, you know exactly what percentage you're putting in. So. It's pure. And the other thing is they're not contaminated with other stuff. If you get some of these things, I mean, it, it's perfectly fine to derive things naturally, but it's actually a lot harder to purify them in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so AHAs, one reason I like AHAs, and, and quite frankly, I think that they are probably the biggest and most important ingredient 
that has been released since I've been in practice. Um, I, I just saw a huge revolution when they first started coming out. And sometimes, you know, uh, ingredients go in trends, and I, and I really hate it when a trend fades because, uh, you know, people are concentrating on AHAs and everybody's loving AHAs, and then peptides come along, and uh, everybody's focusing on peptides and kind of forget about the AHAs. Well, they don't even do the same thing. So why not get the best of both worlds? And in, in, instead of forgetting about one ingredient and going on to the X, let's, let's incorporate it and see how they can work together because they really do work well together. Um, so AHAs can help with clogged pores, acne of all types, um, uneven coloration like splotching and modeling, hyperpigmentation, is, even things like melasma will benefit from it. Uh, minor wrinkles of the skin, keratosis polaris, which is the bumpy upper arm syndrome that people have. I've got a before and after of that today. I'll show you. Um, if the skin is rough textured, AHAs make skin a lot smoother if, it's, if they're used uh, routinely. Dryness and dehydration of the skin, of course. Um, the dull surface texture, which is caused by pileups of dead cells. And keratin, uh, when it's in the cell times literally zillions of cells on the surface of the skin that don't necessarily need to be there, uh, it makes the skin have a grayish tint. Mm -hmm. um, and when we get rid of those cells, that gray tint goes away. Yep. It also helps Im immensely with aging. And it also helps other ingredients work better because when we're not fighting through a bunch of debris on the surface of the skin, it's a lot easier to deliver other ingredients uh, where they can do more more good. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, so AHAs work pretty simply. They they work by loosen the loosening the adhesions or I call the glue bonds between the cells, um, and they basically dissolve the adhesions between the cells so the cells can fall off the skin. Uh, now when this happens and we remove some of these older dead surface cells, this stimulates the cell turnover. And as we get older, our cell turnover uh, declines or decreases, and we don't renew cells as well or as evenly or as fast as we did, say, when we were 20 or 25. When you're 20 or 25, you've got roughly a 28-day cell cycle. When you're in your 50s and 60s, it can slow down immensely. And particularly if you have some other health problems and things like that, that can cause your cell cycle or your cell renewal cycle to slow down. So when we, whenever we spin, uh, speed that up, it immediately will start smoothing the look of the skin. But it also causes the skin to make more of an important subject, uh, substance called uh, ceramides. And ceramides actually fill the spaces between the cell. And with ceramides, if you don't have ceramides, um, you, your skin tends to be very dry and it starts losing a lot of water. So ceramides are what hold the water in our skin. So when we have a slower renewal cycle, we make less ceramides, we hold less water. When we have a normal renewal cycle, we make more ceramides and that holds more water. So uh, the skin will naturally moisturize itself, if you will, uh, when uh, the ceramides are all in place from, uh, from proper uh, cell turnover. Okay. Improves the hydration, and then you get almost an immediate uh, texture improvement. I mean, I've had people call me before and, and said, I, I just put on your alpha hydroxy serum, and I swear my skin looks just so much better just with one application. And it, they will. Um, and of course, it, the longer you use it, the better. I'm not saying that there's a night and day thing on one application, but people can tell a difference usually after one application. Certainly after one uh, exfoliation treatment in the salon, you can tell a difference in your skin. Okay, let's go to our next. Okay, these are all of the different alpha hydroxy acids. So glycolic acid is one of the most, the best known ones. Lactic acid. Uh, which comes from milk, and I mentioned that it, it's also what causes uh, muscles to be sore when you're when you're just getting back in the gym or something like that. Uh, tartaric acid um, comes from grapes. I skipped over malic acid, which is derived from apples. Uh, mandelic acid, I think that that has made a big splash the last couple of years. And mandelic acid is great for problem skin. 
And in mandelic acid has will have some really nice brightening effects. Um, so it's, it's great for that too. Pyruvic acid you don't see really often in the industry, but it is used. And there are such things as pyruvic acid peels. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's still in the alpha hydroxy family. And I like to mix the acids. Um, I like to use a little bit of different acids and we have a, a preparation that we manufacture that actually has six different acids in it uh, because I think it does a better job. And I, this is a theory and, and I'm, I'm not, this is not substantiated by a lot of tests, but I can tell you that I have a lot of anecdotal evidence that this works. Um, and that's that the acids are of different sizes in terms of molecular structure. And I believe that when you start mixing a few of them together, you get a better um, penetration or delivery of the actual active. So you get a better, it's more even. It just looks more even. I, I, I have done some uh, clinical work uh, comparing um, just glycolic by itself with glycolic mixed with, let's say, salicylic and lactic, um, and we get a much more even type of experience when we have a mixed acid. So I like I like working with mixed acids. Now I have two questions. One mm -hmm. is a bit easier. Are there any acids that you would not mix and you would not combine? Not of the alpha hydroxies. Okay. Um, now the other thing is the base. Um, you know, I'm, you know, we develop products for a living. So if you're, if you, if you're not a chemist or you don't have a chemistry background, I wouldn't just go into the skincare room and start mixing acids. Okay. But you can buy products that are pre-mixed with more than one type of acid in it because the bases may not mix. If you've got a base that's, you know, more of an alcoholic type of base versus a base that has more of a, you know, or more of a, a different type of emollient in it or something like that, they're not going to mix and you're going to probably make a mess um, if, you, if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, it's, but buy one that's already mixed, you know, because there are a lot of, not just my company, there are a lot of companies that have mixed acid peels out. You can look for those and I, I personally think that they're a good thing. So. And then my next question, and this may be a little bit too advanced, so if you want to take this into your classes, that's fine, but um, you always see different percentages and different pHs, and I, we don't have to go too into depth, but um, what do you, do you like to see a higher percentage of a specific acid? Like, how do you like to mix that? Well, generally speaking, when you mix alpha hydroxy acids for home use, Glycolic is usually the most prevalent, and it's and in my estimation, it's because it's the smallest molecule. Okay. So it's usually glycolic, and then lactic, and then so on. Um, and you're going from smaller to larger molecules as okay. you go up. So that's that's the main reason for it. Now, as far as the pH, I've got some slides coming up with this on there, but the safest pH for a home care is 3.5. And we, we don't like to go below three, two. A lot of people say, well, it's not as active if it's, if it's you know, if it, it's more acidic. The lower the, the lower the pH, the more acidic it is. Um, and when you get beyond a certain point, you get into a lot heavier risk of inflammation. Um, and, and, and less, you know, they may be stronger, but stronger is not always better. Um, sometimes if you're strong, you can cause a lot of inflammation and inflammation is what causes some of this other stuff like aging and, and, and hyperpigmentation is certainly exactly. related to inflammation. So I think 3.5 at home and then 3.0 is the ideal, um, pH for in salon treatments. So we do drop it down a little bit for control professional use. But these are, these are peels that are left on the skin for about 10 minutes. Now, I know you can get peels with lower pHs, but I just don't think it's a good idea. The skin is, if the skin's leaving red and irritated, you've just kind of gone beyond what you needed to do. And right. long-term um, situations like that over a long term are, are not good and uh, can make your client a lot more reactive to things at home too. So I would stick with uh, the 3.0 okay, for sure. Got it. All Good right. question though. We can go on there. Okay, 
another thing we talk about are beta hydroxy acids and 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 from a chemical standpoint uh, the the alpha versus beta is determined by the position of the hydroxyl radical or the hydroxyl group on the molecular carbon chain so if it's on the first uh, carbon if it's attached to the first carbon it's an alpha if it's on the second one it's a beta there's only really one beta hydroxy acid that's used uh, in uh, skin care and that is salicylic acid um, and salicylic has an antibacterial effect. Uh, salicylic is lipophilic, which means it's attractive to oils. So I like using uh, alpha hydrox, I mean, uh, salicylic on acne clients. Um, and because the salicylic is drawn to the oils that are stuck in the pores. So, and a lot of times I feel like it does a, particularly in, in the salon, or in the clinic, it does a better job of uh, helping to loosen clogged pores. I also think it has a very beneficial, this is totally anecdotal, this is my opinion, but I think that uh, beta hydroxy acid peels are, are, are very effective for people who get um, um, sebaceous hyperplasias, which are these little kind of uh, donut looking bumps that people get on their face um, and they're, they're the outs what you're seeing is the outside of what they're caused by is an overgrowth of the gland deep in the dermis. And when the gland overgrows, it pushes up on the follicle and it, the follicle sort of inverts. And people call me and say, Dr. Mark, I don't know what this is, but I've got a client with something that looks like a daisy on her face. And a lot of times those daisies are, um, hyper, are hyperplasias. Um, we believe that the salicylic goes into the follicle better because of the fact that it's lipophilic and probably does something to sort of minimize the tissue or something like that um, as far as the, uh, the appearance of the hyperplasia. I don't think it's killing it, but I know with clients that I have that have hyperplasias that they've noticed that their hyperplasias don't look as prominent when they get salicylic peels on a regular basis. So I've never oh. put the two together with salicylic. So I know uh, from firsthand experience as well, salicylic is amazing for acne, um, acne treatments. It is, it, it's a really good acne treatment. Now there's various degrees of salicylic. The one that I use the most is actually a 5%. Uh, and the reason I use it is I use it at the beginning of acne treatment. And then I go ahead with an extraction treatment right afterwards or something like that um, because there's not a lot of, uh, it, it's not highly inflammatory because it's only 5%. Uh, it doesn't cause any frosting. Now you can do a 20% salicylic peel, uh, which a lot of times will give you frosting. In certain skin types, you're going to get peeling for five or six days, a lot of flaking. Uh, and the skin will turn sort of white for a while, and then uh, basically the entire, you know, most of the corneum will start flaking off. And it, you know, it takes, it's about a five day process. This doesn't mean that you can't go to work, but you are going to look flaky, and somebody who's more sensitive skin is going to look red. So I like to, I just like working with the 5%, and not say that I don't ever do the 20%, but I, I you know, on a day to day basis, I use a lot of five because it's easy and you can do it on, you know, if I see five acne patients in one day, I'm probably going to use salicylic on all five of them, you know. Yep. Um, so, and because it, 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 it's quick and easy and you can do something afterwards. You don't have to just let it, you know, go home. You can, exactly. you can do things afterwards to that. Okay. Uh, citric acid is also technically a hydro, uh, beta hydroxy acid, but citric acid, you see it in things. And I know some people make some claims about citric acid, but citric acid is really not, outside of, it's a, used as a pH adjuster in products, and it's really not um, therapeutic, I would say that, um, in terms of the skin. So let's go on to our next slide. Okay, so there are different types of alpha hydroxy acid products, uh, depending on the skin type. And I like working with oily combination clog and acne prone skin. I like working with gels. Um, these are usually alcohol-based gels. And when I say alcohol, I'm not talking about isopropyl. Uh, these are denatured alcohol. Um, it's put in there so that the vehicle actually evaporates when you put it on. 
so it, it doesn't hang around and 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 feel gooey, you know. Um, and it's a great a great way to suspend the um, the uh, alpha hydroxies. Serums are, are, are probably the most modern way of doing them, and uh, right now a lot of you know I know our serums uh, are for aging. Um, and uh, we use uh, we use a lot of uh, a silicone derivative um, you know, for our aging. Uh, the reason we do that is it's softer, it's not as drying, and it slows the delivery of the acid, so you're not getting hit with a big truckload of it at once. It's sort of more of a time release thing, right? So you get a slower release. So if you've got somebody who has wrinkles, but they also may be a little red or have some irritation issues, it's a little safer um, to do that. And, uh, and it's very effective. And, you know, people, people will stop using something that makes them irritated. So I'd rather go with a little slower release and have them use it every day, something that's practical, than something that's going to make them red and irritated. Um, because a lot of times they'll stop using it then. You know, by the time they start using it again, you've got more cell buildup that's accumulated, so it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> AHAs are used in lotions a lot for body care mm -hmm. um, because they're, you're much dealing with a much larger area and, um, and the people are putting lotion on their bodies anyway, so why not use an alpha hydroxy if you have a lot of problems with dryness, winter itch, things like that, very, very responsive to alpha hydroxy acid. Um, and then in, it's also put into creams for very dry skin. Again, that helps to slow down the release of the acid. So it's, you know, a little bit slower. Some of the European brands use a little less alpha hydroxy acid. So they have something that's like super, super safe. Um, but you're going to have a slower response with those. Uh, so if you get into you know, four or five percent alpha hydroxy at pH 3.5 or four. Um, it's still going to be effective, but it's just going to take longer uh, to kick in um, if if you can. You know, but um, <coughs> excuse me. For some people with with very dry skin, that might be more practical. It depends on the person, of course. Uh, now, a lot of people put alpha hydroxy acids in cleansers, and there and it is effective in helping to bump off some extra cells that are about to go anyway, but it does not have the same therapeutic effect for cell renewal and acne in terms of flushing the follicles and things like that. There's just not a lot, enough of that in there. And on top of that, it's not being worn on the face. Right. So that's in order to have something that's really effective, they need to wear it. Yeah. You know, it needs to be on there as a day or night treatment. Right. For sure. Um, <clears throat> the professional products, the gels are probably the most popular because they're the easier to work with. I like using gels also because they kind of, you know, if they're done right, you have less problems with them running, yeah. um, i.e. running into somebody's eye or running down someone's back or yes. like that. So the liquids are hard, much harder to work with, um, and the gels are just a better application so that's all I deal with are gels and the same thing's true with the cells so like I'd only deal with gels for professional yeah and then some companies do have the pre-soak pads and they're great uh, that's just a really easy way to dispense it those are usually liquids those are not usually gels mm -hmm. but I think they probably came up with a pad because they were trying to use a liquid product and they found that it was running. You do have more control over a liquid though, if you've got a, the pre-soak pad type. Right, I think um, that's so great for retail too, the pre-soak pads. Right, in a lower concentration, yeah, for home care. Yeah, the, that too. And then I know one company who has has them in their, um, their what, like a dispensing swab for uh -oh. uh, like application. Huh? You, you pump it out or? You sort of like squeeze it as you're applying it and oh, it, cool. you put it on like that and it's in a cotton swab, okay. you know. And that's another, I don't do that with my own products, but it's, you know, that's another way of dispensing it. And yeah. it's another application technique that's, that's not nice for certain things, you know. Mm -hmm. so. uh, we'll go to the next slide. 
Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the effect on the various skin types. So on aging skin, like I said, that constant gentle exfoliation causes the cell renewal process to increase. So your skin's gonna look a lot more smooth. And I say it's, it's removing the hills and valleys on the surface of your skin. So it's all gonna be a lot smoother. Uh, it decreases the surface wrinkle depth. Uh, so you have an immediate uh, texture improvement. Uh, it does speed the cell turn, uh, speeds the cell, uh, I think that's supposed to be cell turnover, turnover. which stimulates uh, lipid production, which improves your hydration. And it's sort of, when it improves the hydration, it's kind of like it's blowing the balloon back up, you know, a little bit. So you, you get a firming and nice smoothing effect on the surface. Um, it helps with the absorption of other performance ingredients, such as peptides or antioxidants. So they are going to go in better when they don't have to fight through all that dry, dead cell buildup that was on there. So other products are going to work better um, if you use the alpha hydroxy acids on a daily basis. Continual use over a long period of time does lay down new collagen. That's been documented. Um, and you know we're talking about months of use uh, it also makes pores look smaller over months of use. So those are some long range uh, things that are helpful um, also with alpha hydroxy acids that occur over time. Um, and improving the barrier function, as I said before, improves elasticity of the skin because it is causing the skin to hang onto a lot more water, which does improve surface elasticity. So that's another thing. So. We'll go on to the next slide. This is kind of how it works. If you've got uh, the bottom slide is a skin that needs treating and the top slide, slide represents a skin with very nice even cell renewal. Uh, as you can tell, this, the top slide is a lot smoother on the surface where the bottom slide is sort of a mess. And it will, the top slide will, uh, the top drawing will reflect light in a better way the bottom line will have a tendency to not reflect light well, which makes wrinkles look worse on the skin look very dull. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example of how that I works. Love your depiction. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so on problem skin, uh, the acids will exfoliate inside the follicle, which loosens the comedones and cell buildup within a microcomedone as well. The removal of the dead cell buildup improves rough surface textures. Uh, skin uh, that's oily has a tendency of very slow turnover because the cells are sticking to the skin and they're sticking inside the follicles themselves instead of falling off of the skin the way they're supposed to. So once the comedones have cleared it, by using this every day, you also prevent new comedones from forming because it's constantly shedding off that dead cell buildup. So your skin doesn't really have a chance to, to form comedones. It, that cell buildup is being removed on a regular basis. Um, Long-term use, as I said before, improves the appearance of the pores. It will make the pores look better. Nothing really shrinks pores technically, but when we remove the debris out of the pore, assuming that the skin is not super sun damaged, um, that follicle has elasticity and it will sort of clamp down once that debris come, has come out of the follicle. Um, so it will look, you know, pores do look smaller, but that's something that occurs after months of use um, that you can tell a huge difference with that if you took before and after pictures over that time. The longer the use, the better the appearance. It's just that simple. And as um, I think the time is going to pass regardless, so why not be using these products and stick to it and get past that maybe initial irritation stage, ease your clients into using these AHAs so that they don't, you know, a lot of people have a tendency to like dive right in and use it twice a day. And I'm on your same page just to take it easy with them and slowly introduce these products to their skin <coughs> so they don't experience the irritation but that they keep on using it. I think that that's the most important part here that you keep honing on is um, regular use is so beneficial. 99% right. of it is what they're doing 24 seven, you know? Okay. So, I mean, to, to do that and to stay within the parameters in terms of the pHs and the concentrations we talked about um, are, are a good idea too, and avoiding that inflammation, you exactly. know?
Let's go to the next slide. Okay, on hyperpigmentation, it basically works by removing the cells that are already stained with melanin. So your cells on your surface are going to be stained. When you start removing this, it will uh, help to, it will uh, you know, lighten it in a fairly, fairly short period of time. You'll see a brighter, lighter, and more even skin tone. Uh, it also helps uh, other things like hydroquinone or magnesium ascorbyl phosphate or arbutin or whatever you're using penetrate into the skin better in terms of um, and these are all um, melanin inhibitors. Uh, AHAs are not melanin inhibitors. They are exfoliating agents so that they work by removing the dead stain cells. Um, and I, as I said earlier, removing the dead cell pileups reduces dullness of the skin and that sort of gray color that a lot of older skins have. Um, and the other thing is that they all AHAs must be used with daily sunscreen and good sun habits because sun is usually how you got what we're treating <laughs> okay so to not stop the sun is like going to the gym every day and stopping by the donut shop on the way home you're just fighting yourself okay so the other thing is without a sunscreen as we're as we are removing a lot of dead cells the skin will have a little bit more of a tendency to get a sunburn uh, so it's very important that uh, an AHA uh, uh, regimen be accompanied by a broad spectrum SPF 15 or higher sunscreen on a daily basis as well. So Absolutely. our next slide. Okay, some things that you don't want to do with AHAs <clears throat> are mix them with a lot of things. Uh, and this gets into the inflammation thing we already talked about. So um, without doctor's permission, I would not use it on somebody who is using Retin-A or, or uh, Renova or any form of tretinoin. Uh, somebody who is who has been using Accutane, let's say, I would say the last four months, um, I would avoid anything if they have, if they discontinued use four months ago, you know, uh, it, perhaps you could even run some patch tests to see or check with their dermatologist. <clears throat> the um, other keratolytic peeling drugs like Differin or Azelex uh, or Tazerac, I'm using commercial names, but Tazerotene and Adapalene, um, if you're doing that, you don't want to mix that because you're, you're basically doing double duty then. You're, put, you're peeling the peel, you know, and that can be very inflammatory. These things are much stronger peels. They don't work in the same way at all, but they also, all of them remove cells. Um, so that's um, when you're, you're doing double duty. Like I said, you're just peeling the peel and you don't want to do that. There are some other topical uh, medications, and particularly the steroids and things like that, that you want to be careful <clears throat> not using. If a client has a history of herpes simplex, um, uh, cold sore uh, flares and things like that, uh, you want to talk to their doctor or have them talk to their doctor and perhaps get on a prophylactic dose of, um, of uh, an anti-herpes medication before you peel them. Um, I, I personally have not experienced this in my practice, but I know of people who have, who have, you know, done a series of AHA or peels and experienced um, a client having a, a herpes flare. Um, so you, you want to, if you do get herpes, you need to, uh, on, uh, and you know, you know, if you get it on, you know, herpes simplex, um, to check with your doctor and get a, um, uh, prophylactic dose of uh, medication before you start this. Uh, <clears throat> any form of current inflammation, if they're having an eczema flare or anything like that, you don't want to be using AHAs. Rosacea, if it's flared rosacea, on, reg on, on um, non-active, I'm going to use that term, rosacea that's not having a flare, I don't think that there's usually an issue as long as it's in a lower concentration as we've talked about and a reasonable pH. I probably it's even good for the skin, but you don't want to do it while somebody's having a rosacea flare. <clears throat> if they've recently had laser or chemical peel, surgical dermabrasion, or even microdermabrasion, you don't want to do it right after that because it will have more of a, 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 a tendency to inflame the skin. I know people and I know clinics that do microdermabrasion and AHA the same day. I don't believe in that. I think that it's kind of a little overkill. 
and it's okay to kind of alternate between the two of them over spaces of time and things like that. I wouldn't do one in one day. I think that's it's, it's over inflaming the skin and you don't want to do that. And you know, the, the thing about inflaming the skin, if you think about it biochemically, inflaming the skin causes a, a, what we call an inflammation cascade, which actually makes more free radicals. And when we have a lot of free radicals, it's when we got to get a lot of collagen and, and elastin breakdown. So um, by doing little doses of boo-boos over and over and over again, it's certainly not doing anything to help you know, with the problem. Um, broken skin, cuts, abrasions, shit, razor burn, stuff like that. Certainly you don't want to put it on somebody who's sunburned. I never use it on anybody who's pregnant or nursing because we don't have testing on it. No, no, to my knowledge, nobody, there are no long-term tests as far as pregnancy. Um, I have always been told not to put salicylic on pregnant women, um, even on a daily basis, like just mm -hmm. acne medications and things like that, you want to steer clear of salicylic. And anybody who has a really, you know, if you know that they have a health problem, have them check with their physician before you do the exfoliation treatments, because that's important, Maybe. especially the, the heavier duty ones in the shop. Okay, next slide. Uh, that, these are just the recommendations we've talked about before. Um, the ideal pH for at home is 3.5. Concentration should be 8 to 10%. Uh, higher concentrations can produce some inflammation problems. Ideal pH for 3.0 is for exfoliation. exfoliation. Concentration no more than 30%. And most of these are self-timing. They're left on 10 minutes. So that's it. And then they, they peter out after 10 minutes. Okay, um, I have all of my AHA patients or clients go through a two-week home care prep. Uh, and th these are some of the things we basically re, re talking about some of these things again, as far as sun and sun care, and making sure they're using a good sunscreen on a daily basis. Uh, we're not gonna begin it with any other facial procedure. That's all we're doing. And then I have them do the regimen at home for two weeks. Um, uh, before I do start the peels. Uh, and this acclimates their skin to the acids so that they're less likely to have inflammation when I put something on them that's probably four times as strong as what they're using at home on a daily basis. So they're already um, doing that. And also talk to them about, you know, you can't go salon hopping and run over next door and get a microdermabrasion in the middle of this. You know, we don't want you to do anything, you know, inflammatory. And so um, you, want, you want to have a thorough education program with them to get them to um, know what, what and what not to do as far as home care. Most of them are pretty cooperative, never really had a big problem with it, but I do spend a lot of time in consultation on the first visit with them or, or the, the, prep, the prep visit as it were, okay? And then we would generally recommend that they get treatments every four weeks after they've done the series. Uh, the series we do generally twice a week for three weeks, and then we reevaluate. And if we're where we want to be, then we switch to once a month. Uh, if we're not where we want to be, we might want to do another six uh, treatments on a weekly basis after that. So that's another way of doing it, and you can just kind of play it by ear. Once you get started and understand how the skin reacts, um, they will understand that. I also want to emphasize that you have to be very careful with waxing during the series uh, because the skin's going to be thin and particularly you never ever want to wax right after a treatment. Um, just leave it alone and you know you, I, you can wax other places on the body. It's not like Accutane that you can't wax anywhere but you don't want to wax anywhere where you're actually using the, the product. Get your tweezers out. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, next slide. Okay, so it's basically the regimen for all is the thorough cleansing with a skin type appropriate cleanser, followed by a skin type appropriate toner. Then you apply the AHA product and then the sunscreen, and then you can use an eye cream or a serum. There are some eye creams and serums out without glycolic in, like glycolic in them, and they're fine, but they're usually a very small percentage, like 3%, because that skin is so thin. I have worked with one or two that I really like. I don't, I don't make that myself, but um, I have worked with a couple that I do like. Okay. okay, and let's go to the next slide. And basically the, the next slide is just the PM, um, just the nighttime. 
You want to remove the makeup thoroughly with appropriate cleanser, appropriate toner. If you want to apply a, a different serum, like a nourishing serum, a peptide serum, antioxidant serum, or something like that, you can do that. Allow it to absorb, brush your teeth or something while that absorbs, and then apply the AHA on top of that. And then finally, your night hydration, appropriate for the skin type, either a fluid for oily skin or a cream or other product for dry skin. And again, your eye cream product for at night. Okay, next slide. Good question, and I, I don't want to, you don't have to go out too much, but if the AHA product is like more of a cream base, you're obviously going to put your serums on before. Um, if the AHA product, I noticed that you say that that should always go on after the um, an antioxidant or a peptide, you would never reverse that. Uh, to be honest with you, it has to do with the base of the other serum. Okay. Uh, and, so and the, law, the law of viscosity when it comes to layering is you always go from thinnest to thickest. But if you happen to have something with a silicone, mm -hmm. um, and if it's a silicone or something like cyclopentasiloxane, which is a very common um, spreading agent, uh, that can could possibly um, block the other serum. Okay. So you need to check with the, you know, you need to check with your manufacturer, first of all, and see which, which, which order it goes in. But you're right that generally it goes from thinnest to thickest. Okay. But sometimes you've got these giant molecules that, you know, could, uh, are put there to slow down the absorption and what you may be cutting yourself short. Okay. You, okay. Right. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. So, Okay, this is one of my typical clients. This is a gal, and she really came in because she was worried about the clogged pores in her temple area. She had a lot of little clogged pores, but little did she know our alpha hydroxy system was going to do wonders for her coloring. And she went from not only looking clogged, but in my opinion, looking a lot older in the before picture, <coughs> and then looking a lot younger and brighter and clog free in the lower picture, you know. So this is about, um, this gal went through a two week series at home of regular care. Then we started her um, twice a week, um, the micro peels in the office uh, for uh, three or four weeks afterwards. I, I wanna say she had, I have to look up a record, but I think she, she had eight treatments. Um, one treatment twice a week for eight times. Um, so, so this was a period of literally like five weeks that we went from this to that. So that she was ecstatic with yeah, the way she looked. Can imagine. So, <laughs> let's go to the next one. Now, keratosis polaris, mainly at home. Now you can do peels on the arms and things like that in the office, but I primarily work with home care because again, 24 seven is what makes it happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, they apply the uh, it's mostly in the upper arms that we're dealing with KP. They apply uh, this uh, alpha hydroxy um, lotion uh, on damp skin. So that right after they get out of the shower, they want to be a little bit damp, put this on, just massage it in just like a regular body lotion. Um, and they do that twice a day. And then I, I tell them again at night, if you're not taking a shower at night, at least wet your arm with a washcloth or something so that you get that surface wet before you put on the alpha hydroxy, because uh, it does a lot better, and you do it twice a day. Let's look at the next slide. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the before picture here, and then that's the after. You can go back, go back to the before, and you can see that, there you go. See the difference, and particularly in the lower arm, we had it really, really nice. This, this is only four weeks. Wow. So we had a nice change for four weeks. Now, KP is ongoing, so you have to keep treating it. it he can't just put the bottle in the bottom of the, uh, of the bathroom cabinet and it, go, it stays away. It doesn't stay away. You have to keep it. It's, it's, a, it's a, a genetic issue, and the people who have a tendency to get it have a tendency to get it again. So I, I just, just make that part of their daily routine. It doesn't take any longer than putting on a regular body lotion, you know. Also has very positive effects on just dry, you know, uh, winter itch kind of skin, things like that. It helps a lot. Mm -hmm. It does. All right. Now I'm going to take you really quick through <coughs> what we do in the actual procedure. 
Um, this is us cleaning off the skin and we're using a cleansing milk. Now, how much you clean at first will have an effect on how much, um, how much debris you remove before you pl apply the peel. So uh, if you've ever worked in a medical office, you know that they, they what they call degrease the skin uh, by using very, very strong astringents and sometimes something like acetone. You know, to, and I don't suggest that unless you're trained in that. That's not a suggestion, but I'm just telling you that it happens. But the, the more you cleanse the skin, the deeper the stuff's going to penetrate. Um, and you, you're trying to remove surface oils and things like that so that the product will go into the skin. I always start off very conservatively and just use a cleansing milk and a toner. And as I go, I see that they're tolerating it okay. <coughs> I might go to a stronger toner. I might put on a, a, I might even put on a low grade acid to clean with, okay? Um, like an 8% before I put on a 30%, okay? Um, just to get the extra uh, oils and things like that off their skin. But I'd never do that the first visit. I always wait and see how they're responding, have them tell me, did you get any redness after your last treatment? Everything normal? You know, I, I always walk before I can run with everything. Right. So, so we're taking the, treat, the makeup and just a general skin cleansing here. We'll go to the next slide. This is us all just finishing up that. Then we're applying a toner in the next couple of slides there. I always position iPads um, and then move them around so I, in case I drop something. And we're setting a timer for 10 minutes to start the treatment. Let's go to the next one. And then um, I've switched to using the giant kind of swabs. I used to use uh, twin swabs and these pictures are a few years old that I'm showing you, but you're applying that. You can also drop to the neck with that 30%. When you go around the eyes, you can go, you know, not into the lash line, but just the top of the abicularis and, and always move that out. You don't want to move it in, you move it out so that there's any little roll of drops of glycolic or alpha hydroxy gel left. It's going to the cheek instead of into the eye. Yeah. Very gently. And then we let them sit for 10 minutes. And of course, you've got your timer. And when the timer goes off, uh, you, you uh, clean up. And I use wet, cold, wet gauze to take the most of it off. Again, being around the eye. Now, I know you pull gently out. Everything on as far as glycolic or peeling treatment is out on the, um, on the, uh, uh, the lower lid because you do not want to push any of that gel back into the corner of the eye. That can call, create all sorts of problems. The last thing we do here is putting on a sunscreen. This is us just finishing with a sunscreen, and that's what she does before she goes. I wrote a book. Or this, this is a booklet, really. It's a workbook. <clears throat> called the Alpha Hydroxy Acid Treatment Guide, and you can call our office and purchase one of these, um, and it kind of takes you step by step and goes through some of the things we've talked about today if people want more notes. Um, and there's even a little self-test in the back uh, where you can test your knowledge and make sure that you're doing everything and, and safe and effective. That's, that's, what we're, that's what we're aiming for. Right? <laughs> Say what? I said, and that you paid attention, right? Yes, and that you paid attention. <laughs> well, I think people who are doing these really, I think the nice thing about our profession is that people do, um, uh, take the time to learn these things because peels are kind of scary if you don't know what you're doing. And these are fairly easy to do, but you have to, you have to have this knowledge for not what goes right, but what might go wrong. Absolutely. Always be prepared with exfoliation. Right. And it's not, 99% the, of them are going to go great, but you have to be careful to filter and, you know, ask those questions. Have you, have you had Accutane in the last six months? Have you ever had Accutane? <laughs> you know, and and take I, a good health history. One of the biggest takeaways from today is just take it slow. Your first treatment, you're never diving in um, head first. When you go, even with home care, never dive in head first. Just take it easy, slow yourself in. 
um, because that's the best way to stick to something and not get freaked out and walk away from it. <laughs> Absolutely, and and, the th and that's true with home care too. Just you know, always I always do the low dose first, even with something like benzoyl peroxide. I always start off with two and a half, and if that's not working after a little while, then we can look at a five or something like that. But um, it's always better to do it with the lowest amount of, because the lowest amount also of potential irritation. Absolutely. Well, Mark, we cannot thank you enough for joining us today. Um, I, as stated, we will have all of the information to register for your upcoming classes. And we know we will see you around beyond January and beyond your seminars. But we thank you so much for chiming in today about exfoliation. Well, thank you so much. And we really do look forward to seeing people at our Boston class in October or our, um, our uh, Houston class in November and also at our three-day in January. So uh, you can go to that link and it has all the schedules set up. So Perfect. Thanks so much, Mark. Talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.